Hey, this is the uh, 1995 Super J Cup uh, review. Uh, we'll do a little something added. All right, so uh, this tournament was hosted by uh, War, which stands for Wrestle and Romance. <laughs> uh, I don't know why. Tenryu? Um, yeah, like I said, pro wrestling, pretty gay. All right, this show featured the tagline, Dreams Come True, again, which is good because uh, the last one was kind of like a dream card anyway. So uh, yeah, it's pretty fucking brilliant. And we got a great video package and like a ton of interviews, like a half, like over a half hour of like interviews and video package. So that was pretty cool. Show started with some techno. It's not a light show, it was pretty funny. I guess they thought it was cool. Maybe in Brazil. All right, uh, opening round match. Grand, N Grand Ninawa, I'm pretty sure. Something like that, Ninawa. Versus Damien666. Uh, this is more fun than a barrel of 60 pop stars. I mean, this was good. Uh, yeah, it was the battle of strange gimmicks, uh, evidently. Um, this one just it started out with both men like shamelessly pondering to the crowd, pandering, sorry, to the crowd, going outside the ring and almost walking away and like doing their poses, getting the crowd and cheer louder and they did a pose down. Two guys with absolutely like no muscle definition. They look like 12 year olds with their shirts off basically, and they had their shirts on, but <sighs> yeah, so, so a muscleless pose now, which is hilarious. And then you get Damien, he, uh, he shuts out like wrestlers' names and then does their gimmicks. Like he did uh, Misawa and threw a bunch of elbows and then a rolling elbow, which is pretty funny. Um, they, uh, he did like uh, Shinzaki Jinsei. By the time he did Muta, uh, he missed the moonsault, so it was probably not a good idea. And uh, yeah, that kind of ended his uh, run. He was pinned. So Damien666 was eliminated by Ninawa, Ninawa or something. All right, and then we had an opening round match between Otani Shinjiro and a very young Mochizuki Mizaki. I always mess his name up. Uh, this is stiff. Uh, shit. Um, yeah. Mochi was wearing a gi. Uh, it's either his background or just a really stupid gimmick. Uh, these two shook hands, basically, and then they beat the shit out of each other. Uh, it wasn't a lot of wrestling. It was basically a shoot match. Uh, as Dusty Rhodes would say, to put it technically, he waffle here, which is, could describe either guy. These guys just kicked the shit out of each other, but, you know, Otani picks up the brilliant submission win in a very short but very violent fight. I feel it was. It was a fight. No holding back. All right, then we had an opening round match between Sho Funaki and Ultimo Dragon. Uh, yeah, you knew Dragon was serious when he was wearing the pink tights. Just nothing's more intimidating than pink. All right, yeah, Funaki just aggressively went after Dragon's leg first, like almost immediately, and just worked on it for a while. And he was really aggressive. He actually reminded me of another Funaki with all the shoot stuff. Masakatsu. Uh, yeah, this was, it's, it's, it was essentially a shoot for the first five minutes for nothing else. Uh, yeah, even when Dragon started to fly, uh, Funaki went right back in the leg, but Dragon proved that speed kills and, uh, get the pinball. Show Funaki was eliminated, although Dragon advances. Alright, then we had the most pointless match of the night. Uh, two guys who should not have been in this tournament. Motagi. Masayoshi versus Gedo. Uh, not bad. Um, yeah, two ugly guys hit each other. That's fun. So, Bobby Heenan. Um, I don't know. They're both wearing astonishingly uncool ninja getup. Uh, <laughs> Motagi's getup was a little more cool than Gedo's, but it's still pretty ugly. I'm not sure what was more ugly though, the physiques of these two men or their ring swag. 
I mean, I haven't seen something this bad since Jack Evans circa 2004. I mean, this was bad. Uh, having said that, the match was, eh, wasn't bad. Alright, then we had an opening round match between Al Samurai and Dos Caras, uh, Alberto Del Rio's father. He actually looks a lot alike, even with a lot of like uh, Del Rio, even with the mask on. Um, yeah, I don't know. Dos was too big to be a junior. I tried to ignore it. I thought he, I heard he was the greatest heavyweight in Mexican history. Apparently, he was past his prime and did this. I mean, either that or Mexico doesn't have a lot to offer. I mean, Jesus, they must not have a lot of good heavyweights. If that was legit his prime. I don't think it was though. He must have been 10 years past his prime. He just, he, I don't know, he had some cool holds. But really, really slow. And not slow where he's like methodical, just slow where he's like kind of boring. Which is a no no. Alright, then we had our opening round match between Lionheart, Chris Jericho, and Nakajima Hanzo. Uh, but I don't know, this match had classic Jericho taunts and mannerisms, and Jericho, you know, and ask him. It was Jaratastic. Uh, yeah. The, I don't know. Hanzo does, Nakajima does a face sitting on Jericho, which is gross. Uh, Lionheart, though, picks up the win with the uh, tried and true line So Nothing's really stood out so far. The opener was really fun, though. Alright, then we had a quarterfinal match between Jushin Thunder Lager and Grand Ninoa. Uh, like 70%. Um, Minoa came out with giant lobster claws and Liger came out to a deafening pop. Uh, Liger's immediately pounced on and the lobster man takes to the air and dives from the inside to the outside. Right on top of Liger, like Liger does. Yeah, just uh, that crafty little bastard. Uh, I, call, I like to call Ninawa, the uh, crustacean sensation. I think that's a good name. Uh, the sea creature is actually doing quite well for himself. Uh, Red Lobster wasn't catching that fella tonight. Um, yeah, Liger was actually on the ropes for more than 60% of this match, maybe 50 actually. I don't know. Uh, very surprising. And it's just because Ninawa kind of caught him off guard early. But once Liger got in, once he got kind of out of the uh, getting jumped at frantically, uh, he kind of kicks the ass and he went for the Watcher Man esque diving elbow and uh, then I kicked out of that, so uh, Liger had to give him the Fisherman Buster and uh, you know, it would have been better if it was the Lobster Trap Driver or something, but still a uh, pretty uh, good way to finish a Lobster. Alright, then we had a quarter. Quarterfinal, uh, Wild Pegasus, Chris Benoit, who always advances. I don't know why, just seniority or something. He, it was Wild Pegasus, Chris Benoit versus Lionheart, Chris Jericho. Uh, this match was good. I mean, it started off with an intense stare now. Uh, if I were Jericho, I'd be shit my pants there and uh, Chris Benoit, but yeah, he actually said, come on, motherfucker, and slapped him around. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, really good stuff. I mean, this was a battle. These guys went at it for probably 15 minutes. Tiger suplexes, dragon suplexes, power bombs, I mean, everything you can imagine. Moon salts to the outside. Uh, these two beat the piss out of each other. It's basically like two Roman, two gladiators locked in uh, Rome in the Roman Coliseum, like battling it out. It's just crazy. Uh, there's a holy shit finish when Benoit hit the tombstone off the second turn logo. Uh, yeah, that was all she wrote. Benoit advances, Jericho does not. Uh, then we had a quarterfinal match. And what a match I was looking most forward to when I read the match listing. Ultimo Dragon versus Otani Shinjiro. I get to like 85%. Uh, it's maybe it's probably the best match on the show. Uh, yeah, this is, this didn't start with a bang. It started with a fucking nuclear bomb, man. Uh, yeah, this match is just everywhere. It started on the ground, probably about three or five minutes. A lot of groundwork. Then it went to the end, and it went right back to the mat. I mean, this match had you hang on every move. You didn't really know what was going to happen. Even the face locks and arm bars, everything was kind of suspenseful. 
and a craft grain. Uh, but for the miss at the end, uh, this match would probably been even greater. Still great against man. All right, then we got a quarterfinal done, pretty much. Dos Caros versus Gero. Uh, what the fuck was this? Uh, having ba basically two classics before this is is pretty much going from a dream job, living in a nice house, and fucking out of the Portland every night to working at KFC, living in a dive, and banging crack oats me on the 7-Eleven every other night. Uh, yeah, Gato is a hundred times better now in his 40s than he was back then. He was shit. All he did was took a beating and then came back. And he was a heel, so it didn't make any sense. Um, I guess he's like Shawn Michaels. Because Shawn Michaels was kind of a... I'll say he was a shitty worker up until like 96. I mean, if he had the red opponent, he was good. but Or a gimmick, but... Yeah, he was better in 2006, like, 2007, 2008, 2009, then he was, like, in his prime. All right, uh, enough about my Shawn Michaels rant, Gator rant. Um, yeah, this was another battle of the ugly attires. And, well, at least uh, Karas has the decency to hide behind the mask. Gator should have, too. God, that haircut was awful. Um, yeah, this was, uh, mm, um, Karas, I, I'll give a little, uh, F, I'll give a little, um, like a plus, a thumbs up to, because he actually was wrestling quite well, kept on that base, but this is still, it's a bigger clusterfuck than the last 20 minutes of Scream 4. Uh, actually, this match made about as much sense as a Sarah Palin speech. Maybe even less. Um, yeah, semi-final was, oh, it was another great match. Jushin Thunder Liger versus Ultimate Dragon, 80%. Uh, these are two of my all-time favorite wrestlers, but along with Bright Heart, they were my favorites as a kid, and Nugata Yuji. Uh, yeah, I was pleased to see that they uh, started on the ground, did lots of groundwork, and they proved they were anything but spot monkeys. I mean, this wasn't Jack Evans and Teddy Hart. Fucking garbage. Uh, this just, this, once the speed picked up, it was like crazy. I mean, the leg work was classic. Um, just everything you can want, basically. I mean, they could have done more, but shit. One of these guys had to make it to the final, and that was Liger when he countered the La Magi scrawl into a clutch pin of his own. And, uh, it was a great match. 80%. And then we had semifinals. Gato versus Wild Pegasus Chris Benoit. Uh, Benoit straight fucked up Gato. Uh, it was all Benoit. Not just the beginning, like the beginning, the middle, close to the end. And then, uh, I don't know, people like to bash Cena for getting beat on for like a whole match and then just coming up and making Superman recovery and then not selling it. Gato pretty much did that, except for he sold it after he won. Ooh. Benoit hit him with like everything and he still came back. It, it didn't really make Benoit look bad, it's just dumb. And they want Gator to be the heel, but he's taking a huge beating and winning. Like, oh. fuck. Must have been more, I don't know. Someone must have been playing politics because there's no way Gator would have made it that far if it was on straight talent. Um, yeah, so let's get the uh, next match. It was, it was a special bonus match. Lucha Libre, specialty. Rey Mysterio versus Sikosis. Uh This was uh, Rey Ray's first big match outside of Mexico, I believe. Uh, when you see guys like La Sombra, uh, Mystico, or Sin Cara, and Masquerade Dorada, you just be like, how the fuck were they the evolution of Rey Mysterio and Psychosis? I mean, Rey Mysterio right now is better than any luchador going, basically, except for, unless you count Alberto Del Rio. And Ray's like, past it, man. Ray in his prime, no one today in Mexico stands a chance to be as good as him. Not in any way. And th this match is proof that lucha can be great. 
<laughs> best uh, Mysterio versus Seacoast match I've seen ever. Better than the ECW, better than the weapon, the two or three falls, better than all of that. Uh, just great stuff. Rey Mysterio looked great, and he knew how to play the crowd already. He had everything he needed. WCW didn't help him at all. It was all him. Uh, big ups to Rey Mysterio. This match I did like. I haven't actually marked the iron yet. 82%, we'll say. 82 is good. It's higher than it. <laughs> uh, then we had the final match. Uh, this is pretty much like sex and other climax. Juice and Thunder Liger versus Gato, 70%, which is being generous. Gato's so bad, it was so bad in the 90s. It was like Mikey Whipwreck, only he was a heel and he wasn't adorable. And I didn't give a fuck if he got beat up. Uh, highlight of the match is basically Liger set up Gato in a Shadow Dreams position to hit him in the face with a cop on kick. Jeez, I almost hope he finished the job at that point. Um, Liger made this lackluster final uh, as exciting as he could with Gato, which was hard because he wasn't polished yet. Uh, so I applaud him for that. But, uh, finish was great. Fisherman busted from the top rope. Liger wins. Otherwise, this would have been a terrible show just based off of Gato winning. Uh, though I strongly question the booking of this tournament, it still did deliver the matchups and uh, the classics. Uh, even if the wrong guys went over uh, three or four times in the night. Uh, still good. Okay, all right, my MVP is Ultimo Dragon. That guy just put in the work. Overall, I highly recommend this show. Bar a few bonehead mistakes, must have been backstage politics. I don't know. Now I'll do a little special. How I would have booked this 1995 Super J Cup. Yeah, I'm, I did. It. I'm doing it my way. David. Uh, my opening round match would have been Rey Mysterio versus Psychosis, Rey Mysterio Jr. Uh, this would be the exact same match they had, only starting the show instead of second to last. Uh, yeah, this was, I'm trying to make this hot. This is probably the hot, one of the hottest openers of all time. I mean, you definitely would be. Uh, Rey goes over, advances to the next round. All right, then we have another opening round match, which was already on this card, but uh, I believe it was second round, quarterfinal. Otani Shinjiro versus Ultimo Dragon, uh, the same match as they had. Only instead of going for the corkscrew uh, plancha, Dragon just hits him with salt. You can't really fuck up on any salt unless you're Jack Evans. Alright, then uh, I would keep Grand Nanoa versus uh, Damien 666, only I would have them go to like a double count out or some kind of hilarious thing when they go to the back. Uh, this match is too fun to. Throw away, so uh, yeah, it's just a draw. So both men are eliminated. Alright, then uh, I would have an opening round match Chris Liner, Chris Jericho versus Funaki. Jericho would go over. Um, this would just be a better match than Jericho versus Nakajima. Alright, then an opening round match I would have Wild Pegasus, Chris Benoit versus Al Samurai. Al Samurai was wasted on Dos Faros. He's Totally underrated. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of muscle, but he can go. Uh, Pegasus wins a top rope diving headbutt. Simple enough. Then we have a quarterfinal match. Rey Mysterio, Ultimo Dragon. It's proven that these guys can go. Well, with hindsight, anyway, you can see that together they're perfect. Uh, this would definitely be a classic. Maybe the best match on the show. Uh, Rey Lee's looking very strong, but Ultimo Dragon wins. But then in another quarterfinal match, it's Lionheart Chris Jericho versus Wild Pegasus Chris Benoit. Benoit still wins with the, team, the turn of stone for the second rope. And now uh, we have the same great match. All right, then we have a semifinal match. Uh, Ultimate Dragon versus Jushin Thunder Liger. Liger received the bye in the semifinals because he was the champion, we'll say. I did the GP champion. Uh, same finish as their actual match with the uh, reverse Lamagi scroll. Liger wins. Also in the semifinals, Wild Pegasus Chris Benoit versus the great Sasuke. Um, that's right. I would do everything I could to bring Sasuke. I would pay him like everything because it would have been worth it. Uh, you, you have to have a rematch in the finals of the Super J Cup last year and. Once again, Chris Benoit wins. That's right. 
uh, yeah, just great stuff. Um, I would probably be five star, wouldn't he? All right, and then our main event, or sorry, before the main event, we have an intermission, and then we do a six-man tag, actually. The Great Sasuke, Rey Mysterio Jr., and Chris Jericho versus Ultima Dragon, Sikosis, and Otani Shinjiro. And I just let these guys go out for 15 minutes, do all the stuff they can, let the finalists catch a breather, and the crowd can be amazed. Dragon pins Jericho. All right, in the main event, Super J Cup Final, 1995. I would have had Wild Pegasus, Chris Benoit, versus Jushin Thunder Liger. Give them about 25 minutes, balls to the wall. Liger wins with the DV, uh, DVT or Brain Buster off the top rope, whichever. They're both cool. And, uh, yeah, Liger beats Pegasus. So he sort of doesn't have, we don't have a repeat, and we don't have Gato. Liger still wins. He just wins against a much better opponent and possibly a five star match instead of one that was bare, that was just over three. <laughs> Alright, this has been Super J Cup in ninety five. My next review will be I don't know how to say it. H A W Russell Marin Uh nineteen ninety three. apparently it's one of the greatest women shows of all time and it was a request, so was it, du was it Double Miss? I, I can't remember exactly who uh, requested it, but I don't know. I got that message a while ago, so I'm doing it, so. Women's Wrestling coming up next. Uh, Super J Cup Rear View. That was my wrist grab. Alright, I'm going to go get some food because uh, I'm starving. It's like a easy uh, friendos.